Hello and welcome to Vain Pier. I am not certain what to do next. Let's go with the main quest. When looking for a citizen, don't forget your vampiric sense. Yeah, I know what I'm doing with vampiric sense. It's complete garbage, you know. Stake is ready. I also have a hatchet. not have done that. I like this. I feel more powerful with it. Not much of a difference, actually. next continue this path there is a fort in the road somewhere here there we go this way This guy, you idiot.
Come right here. Some shillings here. Good. Right, I was actually wondering about something. Let's go to my office and try to sleep there because I want to see something. Blood barrier, claws. That's melee damage. It is good and all, but I don't need it right now. We can carry more bullets. That might be useful. So what I was looking for was uh, that miasma skill. I don't know how it actually upgrades. It's locked. Let's talk to Dr. Swansea. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> You, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Your words bring comfort. I'm a living paradox. There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. 
Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Lady Ashbury. Is it not? But in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Is that her? Flu took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <laughs> Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind, the blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. It seems I'm the butt of a joke, or pigeon of a con. Dr. Swansea might have told me who I was going to meet. I know you're a man of action, Doctor, but take a moment to contemplate the terrain. In this war, discretion is both weapon and shield. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. You didn't leave a first impression that was actually... How should I say this? Spotless. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. I honestly don't believe you. I gather you have found an arrangement satisfying both ethical and corporal concerns. I was brought up not to snigger at my own jokes, Dr. Reed. Hmm. Well, I have a choice. I can say I'm here to help, or I can go and... Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. 
I must refuse his most recent demands. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Who would be so foolish as to threaten you? A kindred spirit. Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze, the blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Here's the thing, though. When I asked for questions and help, you walked it all smart and refused to help me. So why should I help you? Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Or you can stop playing games and just answer my questions now. I need to speak with that woman. I assume. Yes. Simpletons, these nurses. Bred with no respect. Are you sick? What? What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> how brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts lit a poor sod's vein. If I didn't know better, Miss Jones, I'd be inclined to say you enjoy this type of idle gossip. God's honest truth, Doctor. It's just the way it is here. Most of these bitches would let you freeze to death before getting you a blanket. <laughs> you seem to know more about the goings-on here than anyone else. Beware, Miss Jones, in case suspicion should fall on you. That's it. Blame the old and infirm. I see those little bitches' greedy little eyes. Just waiting for me to pop off, they are. Well, you seriously need to die. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? 
Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigans, whores, oh, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. And we know which one it is. It's Miss Hawkins. The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. And she could have mentioned the truth. Are you afraid? She could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps that old crone alive. <laughs> Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Okay. Let's talk to the other girls. We are. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Have you seen a strange man visiting any of the nurses here? I've never heard of such a thing, Doctor. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett's does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. Yeah, medical practice and knowledge, that's exactly what I was intending. Do you know if any of the hospital staff have criminal backgrounds? The people who work here all come from very different backgrounds, Doctor. Just like the patients. Okay. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. There's one more I have to speak with. Right, I remember you. We have a quest for you. I don't see him. Hm. What must I do? Eve drop. If a citizen is behaving suspiciously, their heart will emit a distinctive glow. By looking at the citizen, you unlock a special interaction. Who this unknown guy is? Another night. Mr. Blight. Nice. Is this is the area she needs to be in. It's locked. Okay, not here, I'm afraid.
Nurse Dorothy Crane. I believe she was in the hospital last time I spoke to her. Okay, I guess this patient isn't important enough for a doctor's visit. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Have you heard of any underhand dealings going on in this hospital? I have no time for such triviality, my dear colleague. We're here to save lives. Goodbye, Dr. Tim. Okay, isn't that gonna help? Jesus. Where is she? It says she's in the area. Just can't find her. Wait, is that her? You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I ought to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then, when you go back to Whitechapel, you may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. Now this is interesting. What are you hiding, little mouse? This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Concerning the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stowe, I would advise our members to be very wary about these so-called scholars. Yes, indeed, most of them are always affable 
and respectful whenever they approach us, but it would be quite unwise for a discreet circle like the Ascension Club to foolishly speak about our goals, our members, or our traditions. I also would like to remind our fellow members that the Brotherhood itself is ancient enough to have some mysterious traditions. One of them, according to some informants, could be the ritual of the so-called Ban of the Dragon. It seems that in certain conditions, when the Brotherhood of St. Paul finds a violent or bloodthirsty immortal, they call upon him. I'm sorry, I call upon this ban. What is exactly? I don't know. Does it really exist? I don't know for sure either. But what I have estimated as fact is that whenever a hostile or vindicative vampire has threatened London, it disappeared without a trace after the Brotherhood pronounced a ban upon him. The loyal Fago Basha himself has never been foolish enough to openly provoke the Brotherhood. This is a lesson we must all remember. Never be considered a dragon by the Brotherhood. From the Law of Ascension by Lord Rodgrave, founder. Oh, my God. 
I should probably analyze this blood sample. Here's what's left of him. Not a lot to check, but I should anyway. That's Crane's voucher. If you are sick, if you have no money, whoever you are, whenever you are, come see Dorothy to get help. No tricks, no charges, no questions asked. Just find Darius Peruskius' house and present this culprit. Such a synthetic bone valve. See new Aveti, Benny. Okay. Some voucher for a free checkup in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Oh, that's it. Okay. I think it's good enough. Are there any more of those zombie things? I keep forgetting their names. Scout? Maybe. Need to reach White Chapel again. Hello, are you the friend of that friend? Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here! I need to get out! I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please, take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay, okay, I I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out! Mr. Thatcher, your friend Newton sent me to help you. Do you remember him? Yes, yes I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. Okay. He does have a headache. To find a recipe for that. I need to go to Whitechapel again, you say. Oh, 
Oh come on, how did you not get stunned from that? Sorry. I think I have around two thousand and five hundred experience, I think. Okay. Kind of weird. Fools actually assume that they stand a chance against me. How pathetic. This is no place for you to. here before. Doesn't seem familiar. Let's run towards this place. I can't get through here. Quarantine influenza. Fine, need to jump to the other shore. Maybe I do need a little bit more stamina.
Now I did find some serums apparently. Oh, uh, let's go to my office and see if I can not level up, level the ward. Craft? Yes, it is just that simple. Let's see if we can analyze anything and craft something. If we can upgrade my gun, that would be great. The flower's dying. It needs water. Okay, you've said that before. What do I want? I'm growing accustomed to this. Cool. That gives me just one more second, though. It's nothing. Let's upgrade the spear. And there is the ultimate. How much does it cost? One thousand. It's not even that expensive. I think I'm gonna go with this one. That's quite a lot of shadow damage. The only type of damage I actually am not good at. them from fatigue. You. 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 That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sound potions for fatigue. Because of the level up or because of the night? Okay, let's start with you first. Good evening. Evening, the soldier. Not really. I think you're caught so As long as you remain here, I will make sure you don't have to worry about your health. Don't think you can do much about it. Damage is done. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Time has lost 
Oh, this one's healthy, unfortunate. Good evening. Do you need medical? Well, the proximity of the dead is not the most healthy. Don't take too many risks with your health, Mr. Chidana. None of us are immune to this disease, and that is a good thing. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. It's locked, all right. Okay, now I'm kind of worried, because if they get sick... Good evening, Mr. Good evening, Doc. Is there anything... Uh, really? Why has no one else asked me that since I got here? I thought... Unfortunately, you are not the only person who needs help. And complaining about it won't do you any good. Well, perhaps you're right, Dr. Reed. I'm sure if me missus was still alive, she wouldn't be happy with me going on like this. Goodbye for now, Mr. Okay, who's left here? This woman and this guy. The children, Helen. I'm quite busy right now. Do you need my assistance? Don't be ridiculous. I'm capable of dealing with this myself. I've just not taken the time to do so. Then you are lucky that I have taken the time to do so. Consider it a gesture of solidarity between professionals. I wish this hospital could have received as much attention from you, Dr. Reed. We do not see you in surgery very often. Thank you for your... Hey, don't be like that, dude. Who's left? You're recovering, the woman. Healthy, good. Investigate citizens' actions. What? Is there any quest? Good evening. Do you require medical? Do you know you're the only one who's asked me this? No. Despite what you think about this place, I can tell you with absolute certainty, taking this will help you recover. Well, at least your reputation seems well deserved. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for this hospital. Goodbye, Miss. Can a vampire get sick? Seems very unlikely. Good evening, Mel. Good evening, Doctor. 
Do you need any medical... I'm afraid I do. Like everyone in this hospital. Our job brings us into contact with all kinds of infections, Milton. That's, That's easy for you to say, Doctor. I get the feeling you... Goodbye. Yeah, but because I'm a doctor, I know how to take care of myself, I think. Okay, who's left? You're done, you're done, you're done. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical assistance? I will be fine. As soon... Nurse, you won't be able to help people if you're sick. Take this, and do try to get some rest. I'll try, Doctor Reed. Goodbye, Nurse. Co okay. That should help. Everyone. Has a headache. Hello again, Mr. I'm eternally grateful, Doctor. We were total strangers and you helped us anyway. Can't thank you. Goodbye, Miss. Wait, did I enter the sewers accidentally? Aren't I the lucky one? Jesus. Oh dear, oh dear. Hello again, Mr. Thatcher. Do you feel any better now? Yes. This neighborhood may stink of dog shit and reek of piss, but to me it smells like the purest mountain air. Do you want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher? No, I really don't. An irrational fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. What was he complaining about? Um... When I rescued you, you expressed joy at seeing the sky again. So I'm inclined to believe you were trapped or buried somehow. Maybe during the shelling. Jeez, you're good, Doc. You're really good. Go on, please. Tell me more about it. Newton and I were trapped in a circulation tunnel after an artillery attack. We were buried alive for several days without ever knowing if we'd be found. Oswald, tell me about what happened when you were buried in that tunnel with Newton. It was more than dark. It was black as pitch. Hours seemed like days, and days like months. Oh, the terror, the shameful thoughts. Lord have mercy. Shameful thoughts? Shameful thoughts? Tell me about them. At some point, I don't remember which day, when I thought we'd never be rescued, that this would be our end, I thought, I thought about I thought about... <laughs> say it, Mr. Thatcher. If you ever want to heal, you have to say it. I thought about what I could do to survive. Just for a few more days. I thought about killing Newton. Killing and eating him. The man I fucking love. Wow. What you endured was terrifying. It would have completely destroyed weaker men. It did not destroy Newton. 
<laughs> no. The rat's dead. Tell me about your true feelings for Newton. I love him. I'm not ashamed to say it. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. I can't imagine life without him. I hope you two are happy together. I admire your honesty. It takes courage to stand up to society. The world needs people like you to create change. Courage is what we needed in the trenches, looking death in the face every day. I speak plain. I speak my mind. Have you always been this straightforward? All I know is, before you saved me by the sewer, my only regret was I wouldn't be able to hold or kiss Newton again. I love him, that's all. Why should you be ashamed? I'm not, I said. But Newton sees it differently. Well, perhaps I can talk to him. Mr. Thatcher, do you have a job? No. Since I came back from the war, I spent most of my time and energy just trying to forget. I understand what you mean. I was a soldier, too. No. Nobody can truly understand what I've gone through. Why were you locked in that sewer? What happened? I went by the canal after an argument with a friend. Got chased by these fucking wankers and had to barricade myself in, despite my claustrophobia. Tell me about your claustrophobia. Has anyone given you an official diagnosis? God, that's what the bloody doctor said. But I don't want to go to a hospital to get checked again. I'll deal with it my own way. That sounds reasonable. Why did you run? What was the reason for your argument? Newton wanted me to go to a hospital. But I can't stand being closed in. It makes me feel like I'm suffocating. Oswald, why did you not go to the Pembroke Hospital to seek medical help? I don't trust doctors. All they care about is their careers and processes. I won't be locked in any room again by anyone. Your fear of being trapped is not going to go away by itself. You need professional help. I've seen enough butchers in white coats to last a lifetime. Hospitals reek of chemicals and death. What I need is fresh air. I honestly agree with him here. Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. Hello again, Mr. Good evening, Dr. Reed. You're doing your rounds as usual. How do you feel about Oswald Thatcher? You are more than friends, aren't you? I, I love him. I love Oswald. We knew we wouldn't survive the war without each other. I am terrified, Doctor. What frightens you so much? If people find out. Oswald says I'm ashamed, but it ain't that. It's more, well... You know... I never thought I'd love a man. Enjoy your love. And enjoy life as long as you can, Mr. Blight. Don't let anyone tell you who you should love or how you should love them. I appreciate your kind words, sir. But it ain't that easy. It's all so new to me. You and Oswald were buried alive during the war. Tell me about it. Yeah. It was last summer. A shell hit our trench and we were buried for a week. Oswald seemed far more traumatized than you by the event. It wasn't the first time it happened to me. Surviving it again gave me strength. You believe that? How did you survive for a week? Luckily for us, there were rations and water in the tunnel. It was an outpost, see? Since then, Oswald's not keen on being inside for too long. Okay. Found out that we need from those guys. Headache. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Can I make medicine for that? Just gonna go and check real quick.
FIFA. I see no one here. A shame. We don't have treatment for headaches yet. I need one more of those. Come on, I'm bored. What about you? What, what can I do with you? Nothing. I hope I find some then. Let's go to Whitechapel. Sorry, sir. No, it's an inch! An inch! Yeah, I just know that because we came too close. Someone might need help there. Wait, is that where I think that guy from? Yeah. 
You're gonna try again. Okay, we've been here. Looted everything we could. Try again. Okay, we've been here, so there is absolutely nothing to loot. Very well, let's get out of here. of XP you get from citizens you choose to embrace is directly linked. Okay, go this way. I do believe there was sort of a boss battle here before. Nothing to do here, I'm afraid. Fine. You have to jump to over here. Go. Yeah! 
Okay. Chapels, that's a stable. Yeah, that sounds about right. White Chapel. This neighborhood is linked somehow to the kind Lady Ashbury's blackmail. First, let's find this Petrescu fellow. Petrescu. Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now, goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Nobody at home. Strange man was at the door with the pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. Okay. No, please, I don't have your money. Journalist was this way, right? Most of the prostitute. Christina Popa. Thank you. 
Let's talk to this guy first. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane. Dorothy... I'll leave you. Okay. Now the juror must. There he is. I can't heal in this area. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Hmm. I still have questions about that Darius fellow. I don't know. He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange map. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can... Goodbye, Mr. Duck. Yes, let's find this letter. That would be great if I actually could run a little bit faster if I was in this mode. If you are sick, if you have no money, whoever you are, wherever you are from, come see Dorothea. Hello again. Amelia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Very well.
very well. I need to find the mailbox. Darius Petrescu's letter. My dearest, most beloved children, I'm so sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, my children are still living in a country consumed by the war. But there is also a war going on here in England. A war against poverty and against injustice. This is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years. This is why I am waiting to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That properly means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must take now. To feel useful one more time, I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me, and remember that your father loves you, all the way from this cold, damned country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Petrescu. I don't see an ear. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. If I knew what here it is right now, I can actually tell you what the state of Romania is right now. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again? Go away. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see Dorothea. Don't make me regret this, though. You have to make medicine for this man. On my many journeys, I believe I was the most amazed by the exploration of the Mediterranean Isles, in particular the Isles of Santorini. Searching for traces of vampire presence in these sunburnt lands, Herodotus himself referred to the islands in his fourth book. And I am personally convinced that there are many mysteries to be unveiled in part of the world. Who knows that even today the islands of Sanuteri is still considered by some as the most vampire infested place in the world. Why more than the Carpathians and that its inhabitants are considered as specific, um, specialists of the vampire hunt or the hunt or Ricolacas. Ricolacus. That sounds like werewolf more than a vampire, actually, as they call this creature. According to the local myth, the Ricolacus is that person who does not decay and who can show a vermilion complexion as long as he is gorged with flesh blood. He cannot enter a house without knocking and getting a response. Galax makes him flee. He does not consume under the sun, and his skin blackens. He can charge into a wolf and other animals. What struck me as the most in that the same name exists with small variants from the Mediterranean Sea to the Balkans. The Greeks call him Varicolacas, 
Bulgarians and with Macedonians, <laughs> Macedonians, yeah, uh, named him Varkuak. Or Varkuak, yeah, it's pronounced Varkuak, however you spell it. The Serbians call him Vukdok, yes, Vukdalak, a name so similar to Vukdor, Vukod. No, it's not. You already know, my dear brother, just to write a few words. Now give me the shavers. I am personally convinced that we are here, conformed to some of Porto Vampire. Maybe they are missing links between the modern vampires and the creatures that came before them. God allows me enough time. I wish one day to go back to the sanatory in the islands and find the trail of this antique and forgotten figure. From drinking under Fort of Knowledge by Usha Teltry, primate of St. Paul. <laughs> there was no Macedonia during that place, during that time in history. There were either Greeks or Bulgarians during that time, so I don't know why this letter was referring to them as Macedonians. One thing is for sure though, you don't make fun of Macedonia, they will bloody kill you. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. And who is she, really? Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man for sure, but a very poor writer. <laughs> Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough, and clever too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Petrescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. Sure. Tell me everything. I do not... So Dorothy's real name is not Crane? Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Yeah, here's the thing though. Romania is occupied because it's their own fault. If they had joined the war sooner, they would have won it. Especially during the Brazil Offensive. Oh well, missed opportunity for Romanians, I say. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. It is not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. 
I still see a dark future ahead for my people. If Romania had fallen, I mean, if they had lost the war, Romania would not exist. Neither would have Serbia, actually. But that is another matter. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. You know, I still have no idea what time period this is. I mean, if the war is over, why do you refer to it as occupied Romania? This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, actually, that's yeah, stupid, but whatever. Tell me everything you know, Ed. Yeah, because this one is not actually dark, and I'm making the mistake Goodbye, of clicking it again Petrescu. and again. You do something about his broken eyes. Dorothy was in here, was she not? Ah, still their medicine. This is the humane thing to do. from Nurse Crane. Fine. My dear Dorothea. Ah, to Nurse Crane. Okay. When you read this letter, I will be on the boat that will take Anton and me back to Brasov. England was not for us, and I confess I cannot wait to see again the proud hills of Transylvania. Um, okay, okay, okay. Are you talking about the Austro-Hungarian part? Houston, <laughs> Brasov, okay. As soon as we are there, I promise, I'll light a candle in Black Church and pray for you to survive this terrible epidemic. I know that you do not agree with the decision, that you are determined to be more useful by helping our comrades exiled in the East End. But Anton cannot wait to return to our beloved country and see our long-awaited revolution bloom. He is my husband, and I will stay with him. I know we had our arguments and our fights. I know you would have wanted to stand by my side, by your side, and help you manage this clinic of yours. But now that I am leaving England, be assured that anything would happen to me and to you. If you ever were to greet trouble or danger, I would come back immediately to London with, our, with or without Anton. Please think of me as much as I think of you. I am your affectionate sister, Theodora. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vasily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? 
Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Aspirin and salicin, you say? Why not some warm milk and a kiss on the cheek? Where are the quinine salts? Tried buying, borrowing, even stealing. There's none to be found, Doctor. <coughs> he's not convulsing. He's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel! Hand me that scalpel! What can I do, Doctor? I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy? Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Right then, Nurse Crane. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. He's still bleeding, doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. I must... first suture the artery. Find the wound. The source of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, Doctor. We've lost the pulse. He... he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. I doubt you're here to test my bedside manners. It's fine, I actually don't mind you healing people. So what do I owe this as long as you're not killing them. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop, Nurse Crane. 
So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Charm. Do I have this? Listen very carefully, Dorothy. You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my dead Nurse body. Nurse Crane, enough. Listen as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon... Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities in the Resistance are over. Let it go. I'll... I'll let it go. Yes. All gone. New citizens available to kill. Lovely. The consequences of my actions. Oh, I still have things to do. I need to cure that young guy. See them fancy clothes? This one's a top! He has fancy clothes. He's a vampire, right? What more do you need? This door's been unlocked. Good. Okay, what was the cure for that thing? This guy has migraine. So does this one. You are all recovering. Except you, you have a headache. Something I was looking for, wasn't right. To be certain, I don't want to be wrong about that. Okay, 
cannot analyze that. Something I actually have to check, but I'll check it in my place. The inventory in this game isn't very good. Now, where was that guy? And there he is. Hello, Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. Yes? Do you need some help, Mr. Petrescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, Doctor. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor. <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Okay. That was fun. something I need to find a recipe or something will help me out where's a merchant here let's see if you have what I need You never lose your folk. Right then. Sure. Aluminium shard, powder, good handle part. You have nothing. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Distribute flowers at this hour of night. Good evening. I'd like to see. Don't have anything either. We need to talk to Miss Ashbury. Okay. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. It's of course a trap, you know. Kill it, boy! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
Oh, come on. Foolish this <laughs> mortals. I was gonna say human, but the word escaped my mind. A new weapon? Let's take a look, shall we? An offhand weapon. Stun. Gonna keep the stake though. It's more powerful and a little bit faster right now. I assume. Let's let's actually take a look at that. difference in speed. Okay, where to next? Right, we need to speak with the woman, but before that I'm going to just teleport. Come on. Nothing here. The light. Okay. Need to do that as well. And Brook I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. Hmm. 
Hiding your true appetites behind a facade of compassion. Bravo. Very clever indeed. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. So in the end, the accusation was true, wasn't it? The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. The case is closed, your ladyship. The person who took advantage of you has, shall we say, seen the error of her ways. So who was it? My lady, the blackmailer was dealt with using the utmost discretion. The culprit's identity is of no relevance. Thank you, Jonathan. That is exactly what I needed from you. You have proven your loyalty, so... As a friend, please accept this small token of my appreciation. Thank you, my lady. If you have an inclination to learn more about vampires or your current situation, I will be glad to aid you in your quest for knowledge. Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our... hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London Vampire Society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now. And 27, I shall remain. Yeah, sure, you're 27. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, scowls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. What type of vampire is a skull? Not a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, 
you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well trained. Though I can't be certain, more than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewin. The once glorious. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society. And like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone. But it seemed they have been recruiting. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time, and I've never seen it like this. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush. Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. Oh, about the bastard who abandoned me. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. <laughs> well, that answers the next question, I guess. Excuse my forwardness, but... Are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution, and I'm no fool. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. Lovely. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake. I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. Yeah, the legends. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word. Defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No. You are now an echo, and that you shall remain. Okay, you can't just make up words. So we are Echons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Echon are vampires. But all vampires are not Echon. We are a... but a branch of the immortal tree. Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. 
we are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Cold lesson. How did no one actually caught you drinking blood? You were not very good at hiding this. Razvan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the Skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. Establish a connection between the vampire epidemic and the Spanish flu. Right, let's level up. I need more of that. We need three thousand for this one. So this one costs one thousand, right? Let's have this. Reports of mysterious disappearances have escalated in the past weeks. It has reached a point where witnesses have no quell before recounting their testimonies to the officer. Although this phenomenon appears to be a nationwide occurrence, statements in the last 24 hours have converged around a single area in the country, Whitechapel, London. Yes, once more, the despised lot of East End is left to struggle on its own, continuously overlooked by the authorities, even while numerous fam <coughs> families have this district report and explained the disappearances of relatives and neighbors. What has happened to these missing individuals? Where are they? The only link between them seems to be their health and their need for urgent medical attention. Until recently, it was a local secret that the only place to get help was discreet dispensary managed by an unidentified good Samaritan, but the place now seems to be closed, and no one has any news from the facility. Did the missing persons go to more secret places? Have they been discreetly moved to a more official service? One day soon, the London City Council's Board of Health will have to answer for this new mystery. So that's a major event. This guy has a code, I have to cure him, and you have a code as well. Sean Hampton. Benjamin is a war veteran. That's how we know. My green. Hmm.
my recent trip to Whitechapel proved to me how desperate the situation is for Londoners, and how they all must cope with the threat the best way they can. Causes and effects seem irremediably intertwined. Dorothy Crane chose to steal and blackmail to gather enough money to illegally heal the poor, but I also saw her dispersionally try to save a dying patient in her dispensary. In the end, we both failed saving the poor man, but I am now convinced that the Spanish flu must be linked to the vampire epidemic, for my analyse of residents' blood revealed the same high unstable blood I have already observed to William Bishop. I should report all these events to Dr. Swansea and ask for his medical and vampire expertise. But that's gonna be next time, maybe. So, that's where I'm gonna end the episode. Thank you all for joining me, and I'm gonna see you all then. Goodbye.